Hello and welcome to Spokane County Spotlight. I'm Commissioner Al French and my guest today is Jerry Gimmel, Chief Executive Officer for Spokane County. Jerry, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Al. So today's format is going to be a little bit different than what we traditionally do because today we're going to talk about all things great and wonderful about Jerry Gimmel. And you're probably wondering, well, why would we do that? Well, Jerry is just completing a career of 40 years with Spokane County. And he's going to be retiring here in the month of April, the end of April. Mm -hmm. And we thought it would be a great opportunity to share and glean from Jerry all the things that he's seen at Spokane County over the last 40 years. So uh, before we get started with that, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Well, thanks, Al. Uh, my 40 years, you have to put it in two sections if you combine right. them all of them, because I took a break. But uh, I came to work the first time in the county um, in February of 1975, mm -hmm. and I came to work as a road laborer. And at the time, before, I was working at Kaiser Trentwood, and I didn't have enough seniority to get off the rotating shift, and I had decided to go back to night school to finish college. And I couldn't do it until I got a, a straight shift. So I was lucky enough to get on at the county. And I worked uh, probably maybe 10 to 12 different jobs, ran a grader and loader and sanders and, and got into management and was the training officer and the asphalt foreman. And, and when I retired after 33 and a half years, I was the county's operations director and had a great career and, and, and can't think of any job that I didn't just love. I just had all these opportunities. And I wasn't retired very long, and I went to work for the city of Spokane. And I was the deputy director of public works and utilities, which was a, another great job, kind of a dream retirement job, if you will. Um, and then I, then I was the public works director and utility director. And then I went up, when Mayor Condon was elected, I went up to work in the mayor's office. So I was there for five and a half years. And then an opportunity came to be the vice president of finance and administration at Whitworth University. And I was blessed to get that position and loved it there. And then the county uh, was, was having some challenges to get a CEO to replace Marshall Farnell, which was an awesome CEO for years and years and years. And we had worked very close together for years and years and uh, came back and have been there for little over five years or almost five years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, your commitment to uh, public service is uh, obviously demonstrated in your years of service, not only to the county, but to the city and quite frankly, a little bit uh, with uh, Whitworth University as well and stuff. So I think uh, uh, you were also prior to that an instructor too. Uh, taught uh, classes in public administration, if I remember right. Yeah, I, when I was, I had the opportunity to be an adjunct professor for Eastern Washington University in their MPA, and at that, that time it was an MPA, MBA, Masters of Public Administration, Masters of Business Administration, were combined and uh, taught, actually the first class I taught was uh, previously taught by Terry Novak, right. who was a longtime city um, uh, manager who, who had passed away, unfortunately, kind of unexpected. And then I also was teaching at Whitworth in their continuing ed as an adjunct um, for, quite a, for quite a while. In fact, when I went to Whitworth, uh, originally I was teaching at both places at the same time. So um, haven't done that for a few years. Um, who knows, maybe that's something mm -hmm. somewhere down the line I might wanna, uh, if I get the opportunity to do again, but it was a great experience. In fact, one of the things that, that always makes me smile is not only at the county, but at the city too, is I will run into people that were in my class that are now department heads and, and other um, uh, positions. And it's always fun to see them and go, oh yeah, I remember you, you were in my finance class, you are in my po policy cycle class. So. It was a great opportunity. Well, because of your experience at working at the city and at the county, mm -hmm. uh, it gave us and you a great opportunity to develop regional relationships with your counterpart at the city, uh, Teresa Sanders. You want to talk a little bit about that? Oh yeah, one of the one of the highlights of my career was being able to work with Teresa Sanders. She was, 
she was one of the most creative, hardworking people that I've ever, I've ever been able to work with. And because of her efforts and a lot of efforts of, of the Board of County Commissioners and, and mayors and stuff, that whole area of, you know, we're better together, we're more efficient together, um, you know, we should look at, we should explore ways to do things, you know, as a mutual basis. One of the things that has always been interesting to me, the biggest difference between probably working for the county and working for the city is, as you know better than anybody else, uh, Commissioner, is that everybody's the county's constituent, mm -hmm. which you, you almost have to have a regional view because they're all county, where when you're in the city, not that you don't care about the rest of the region, but your, your core constituents are within your own boundaries. So yeah, it's been probably one of the, one of the highlights of the years is to, is I can remember when we barely talked to people on the other side of the river mm -hmm. and that was the culture and the, and the shift in it has been amazing. Yeah, I remember when I came from the city to the county, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, it was amazing to me, the perception of uh, those across the river and I don't care whether you're in the county or the city, mm -hmm. it's those across the river uh, are uh, nefarious or whatever. And, uh, and the truth of the matter is, you know, we got employees on both sides of the river that are just trying to serve the public Excellent. and uh, do the best job they can. And uh, so, uh, but you know, over your, over your career, you've had a lot of uh, significant uh, uh, achievements uh, and uh, legacy building opportunities and stuff. What are what are some of the highlights for you as you look back? Well, there's been a, there's been a lot of, of of things that I was fortunate enough to be involved in that if I hadn't taken this career path or been allowed to do it, that I would have never been part of. And one of the things is you never, everything is significant has hundreds literally of fingerprints all over it. It's never one person or one, mm -hmm. uh, uh, even in our case, even one government. Uh, that makes these things happen. But I think probably, you know, from, I can remember, for instance, um, I had just got to the city and part of my task was to go uh, talk to WSU to get enough right away on the north side of the railroad tracks to start <laughs> the process of thinking if they were gonna build a pedestrian bridge or how would you link the, the two? And like I say, there's a lot of people involved in it. Um, and, and of course that was significant. I think probably of all of the things, I would say that the public development authorities mm -hmm. are, the, are the highlight. And, I, and there's a lot of reasons for it. I'm convinced that Amazon, through the efforts of you and, and, and Larry Crowder and a lot of the rest of the board members that we mm -hmm. serve with, that that wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened. And I don't think the development. I'm excited about the Northeast PDA. Uh, an area that has a lot of promise. I don't think that um, their future is a lot brighter because the county joined that PDA with our friends at the city. And I, d I personally think that's the future yeah. and, and can, can see somewhere down the line that maybe a county-wide PDA, mm -hmm. it might be in the future. That's, that's the best vehicle for economic development that we have in this area. So having even a very small part in those you know, you have to have the, the cooperation of a lot of different entities. You have to have a regional view of everything and then seeing the results of that that didn't, that happened over a few years, I think is probably the highlight, I would think, for yeah. myself. Well, and I would agree with you. I think the, the West Plains PDA is, and the fact that it was an uh, organization that was in existence when Amazon uh, uh, came along uh, uh, it facilitated that deal happening here and as opposed to it could have easily gone to Post Falls or could have oh, easily sure. gone to Coeur d'Alene. Absolutely. You know, they, uh, they did not have to be in Spokane County and so uh, that, uh, that's one of those significant landmarks that uh, you can look back on and say, you know, I was part of that. BF and Goodridge before that when they had the, I mean, that was probably yeah. the first toe in the water as they yeah. say, uh, that we could all, you know, we could whatever, you know, differences we might have or perceive we have, we could, right. when we work together, good things come out of it. There's always a good result. I think the second thing I'd say is that I've had the opportunity to work with a tremendous amount of very talented, dedicated folks. And as I used to teach in my class, public service, there's something in, 
individuals that lead them to public service. You know, it's, it's um, a desire to, to serve, you know, others. And, and I've had the opportunity to see a, just a tremendous amount of very good, talented public servants that I got to work with and still work with, uh, but on both sides of the river. And I'm, you know, any, any um, uh, interactions or anything I could do to help promote that culture, uh, I'm, I'm, that's, that's one of the highlights too. Yeah, the, the regional partnership, it, it's not only between the city of Spokane and Spokane County, but it's also with Spokane Valley and mm -hmm. all of the other jurisdictions that uh, make up Spokane County and stuff. And there are, are a lot of things that we've done as a region to uh, serve our collective constituents. And I, I really uh, uh, like the, uh, the comment that you made earlier, and, and I use it myself. Uh, you, know, you might live in a city, but all of you live in the county. Absolutely. And uh, so uh, it doesn't matter whether you're a city resident or county resident, you're all county residents. That's right. So we're here to serve everybody and stuff. But you've also been at the helm as we've seen some cultural changes in the county. Um, you know, I'm thinking about uh, not only the work that John Dixon has done with regard to improving efficiencies, uh, lean management now uh, is, is part of our culture, but uh, there's also an awful lot of cross-pollinization, especially at the leadership level uh, within the county and stuff. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Oh yeah, thanks for the opportunity. What, it's almost, it, it's one of the more, I think, significant changes in the culture is that we think nothing about, like yesterday, we had one of our, we call it the COVID recovery committee. And because of, you know, part of it's because of the technology, but you know, you look up at the board and, and almost the entire county leadership is up there. Electeds, non-electeds, department heads and stuff. And, and when we started to do the retreats where these people before COVID could physically get together and the board was very gracious as supporting that effort. Mm -hmm. There was a time that I remember, and of course it's a long time ago, but it doesn't seem, you know, time flies, where you could literally work at the county for 20 years and never physically see one of the other of the 50 lines of business, maybe one of the other department heads. Now, that would, see, that would just seem such an odd, because we talk to each other all the time. And as you say, they share, you know, this is what I've done, what have you done to help your efficiencies or help your employees' development? Um, Another highlight, if I may, is the board, this board's commitment to employee development has been huge and that will serve the public probably to their benefit more than almost anything else that I've seen at the county. Well, and, and we are experiencing um, uh, the, the gray tsunami, if you will. There's an awful lot of oh, yeah. folks that are our age that... Uh, are now uh, looking to retire, and as they do, and all of that wisdom and knowledge, uh, you know, goes out the door with them. We need to try and capture as much of that with our newer, younger workforce and stuff. So, um, talk a little bit about some of the some of the work we're doing to transition um, well, some of that knowledge. We've got, and the Gray Tsunami is, you know, and I'm part of that to, you know, with a lot of other folks. We've, we've got a, a HR, or excuse me, Human Resources has set up training courses. We have future leadership groups that, that meet on and, and share information and get to talk to, you know, the gray hairs, the folks that have the institutional knowledge. One of the things that is just awesome that I've been able to um, uh, participate in with John Dixon mm -hmm. is when these groups, these cohorts, get done with their training and these are the future leaders of, of the county. We go, we go and they do a presentation of what they've learned and it is fantastic. You just sit there and you think, that, or at least I do, I said to myself, I said, the county is in such good hands with these people. The future is so bright. They're, they're eager, they're, they're, their commitment to public service. Uh, if you offer them information and training, they'll gobble it up as fast as you can, you can put it on the table. And it's just, it's amazing. I'm, 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 I'm excited for the future of the county. Well, and we've seen some significant leadership uh, shifts at the mm -hmm. county already. I mean, uh, Marshall Fornell retiring, I think, after 42 years or something like long, that. Yeah. And, and our lead civil attorney, Mr. Amasio, retiring. Of course, he's still in the office. 
uh, but uh, uh, and then uh, Bob Wrigley and stuff. So we've got a new chief financial officer, chief budget officer, Gary. and uh, and then. Uh, but you know, when I the, uh, probably the only thing that I can think of that uh, somebody could say maybe you failed at was uh, retiring last year. You <laughs> you actually were going to retire last year and. Uh, because of COVID, you were gracious enough to extend your retirement uh, until we could get through this. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the you well, you the board was gracious enough to let me hang around longer than than my original retirement. It was, you know, one of the hardest things to manage, no matter what you do, but especially in the in the public sector, is fear. And the, tr and the reason that it's so hard to manage is it's a sliding scale, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and COVID's a good example. There are people that are probably still in their basement right now, hud huddled since the first they heard of it. There's people that never put a mask on or gave it any thought and still don't do it. And everybody in the middle, you know, there, it, and so you're trying to manage through it. Well, because of the way, you know, in, at least in our generation, we haven't faced the pandemic since the Spanish flu of any size. Um, it was, it gave me a very uneasy feeling to leave at that time until at least we got what we called, or I called and Gary and, and John, the COVID budget mm -hmm. to see what the impact was actually going to be. Was there going to be any relief? And let's get that 21 budget put out first. And then it, it just seemed like a better, a better option, um, to leave than if I would have left when I, in last June. Well, and, and the budget concerns, I mean, when, when we looked back uh, uh, to last year, uh, close to this time, but uh, more in March of last year, and knowing that uh, COVID was in our future, uh, but not really understanding the full impact of that, we had to uh, um, uh, re, uh, not only reinforce uh, you know, what we do as a primary service, but we had to deal with our employees much differently. I think we've got something like 1,900 employees and about a third of them are now working remotely. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I would have never imagined that uh, we would be in that situation, but now that we are, it's actually not working out all that bad. In fact, it's uh, there are a lot of benefits to the working remotely and stuff. You want to Talk about how that has changed kind of some of the culture at the county. The, my, one of the things I want to give kudos to are IT people, because you're right. We went from you know, maybe half a dozen people that work remotely to you know, 500 in a very short period of time. And we were making this up as we went. And they, they just did a yeoman's task of keeping everybody business and getting them laptops and docking stations and how we're going to do this you know, if you're going to work from home and stuff. I think one of the, one of the more interesting um, uh, issues of the future is it'll never go back to what it was before because you have to ask yourself if, if, um, if there's not a drop in the level of service to, the, to our constituents and, there, and the majority of these folks now work from off-site where they used to come down and fight for parking and all those other things that they did, the, it begs the question, so why would they all come back right. if this works? And that changes a lot of, of dynamics for a lot of things. If you, for instance, if your situation is where um, uh, you had to worry about daycare, uh, and of course COVID forced a lot of folks home because the kids couldn't go to school and stuff. Uh, we joke about a, a very serious subject down at the county is parking. Well, parking's not an issue right now. Um, and, and I think another thing that we, it's going to be interesting is those of our constituents that would physically come down to do business at the county, and that was their preference. They had this, this t they went through COVID or they're going through COVID where they, they didn't have the opportunity to come down. So they adjusted. They either did it over online or, or, or whatever and stuff. Now, the question is, are all those people going to come back when we open our door and say it's free to go down? I don't think so. And that's going to change the dynamic of the business model, too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. So uh, the county has um, gone through a series of challenging budget 
um, sessions. Um, in fact, uh, a couple years ago, I can remember where we were even contemplating doing a levied lid lift to uh, exactly. get additional revenue to balance the budget. That's the a combination of a, a variety of things, many of them really out of the control of the county. We react to um, forces that are out of our control. The legislature has uh, been uh, notorious in uh, changing the economics for counties, uh, unfunded mandates, and and uh, we're now looking at you know having to go to five commissioners and uh, not only the cost associated with that but also uh, the organizational shift the uh, responding to five commissioners instead mm -hmm. of three mm -hmm. is is going to be significant but despite all of those challenges um, well, year before last we uh, we went to the uh, underwriters and the credit agencies and uh, Spokane County is now, I think, one of two jurisdictions in the state that's got a double A plus credit rating. You know, talk about the 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 challenges you've had to endure as the CEO to put together budgets and make those adjustments, those those shifts in the sales to try and get us to where we're at. Well, a lot of the credit goes to the to you and your fellow commissioners because we, you know, we, we all collectively take a lot of pride in our bond rating. It's the mm -hmm. highest that it's ever been. Yeah. And you know, I would have thought a few years ago that you know that was just a pipe dream. But um, you know, we kept the powder dry, as they say. We were, um, I think, the priorities. Your your what is your primary functions? You know, what do you need to do versus what you may like to do or the, mm -hmm. or you could do if you wanted to spend the money on it. I think the employees uh, in, in deserve a lot of credit for our good financial um, uh, situation. Um, and, and I think the economic development efforts, mm -hmm. you know, that have probably had a lot to do with that. We're, we're, we're a, a very hot market right now and the future even looks hotter and better than it does. You know, the Amazon kind of took everybody, uh, took most of the attention, and they, sh and they should, it's a, it's a huge, but there's a lot of other industries that are coming here or looking to come here with good paying jobs and stuff that, you know, um, that should help secure the, the financial future of the county. You know, you've got to, you've got to spend under your means. Mm. It's not really any different uh, philosophically than most families have to deal with too and and I'm proud to say that that our budget people Tanya you know, Wallace that was with us and now is with the city and Gary and and Bob Wrigley before all of them uh, and Marshall of course had had his hand in a lot of those budgets with the staff they've been very prudent with the taxpayers money and and I, if I may I want to add that that is also softened the blow because we didn't know COVID was coming but thank goodness that we were we were we were in pretty good shape when it did come, or we would have. A lot of jurisdictions are in a lot worse shape than we are. Yeah, we were. Uh, I mean, building up those reserves and everything. Absolutely. Uh, is uh, the, these are the times that uh, okay. you uh, you try and prepare for and stuff. And so, so as you look back on your career, what is it that you're most proud of? That's, that's a difficult one. I know what I'm most thankful for. I'm most thankful for the incredible amount of people, good, good, productive, creative, hardworking people I've got to work with through my whole career. And I can go clear back to when I was a road laborer, mm -hmm. you know, working in, or, or, you know, partnering building a road with the other grader operators and the, and the guys that were hauling the gravel and, and the roller operators. Um, proud, probably, I guess if I had to name one thing, having, having a little bit to do with people that maybe historically did not communicate well or get along very well, helping them find a way to get along better. That's kind of an awkward way to say it, but I guess if I had to pick one thing, that's what it would be. And that includes our union folks. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I used to be the chief steward of one of the, of the unions. And, you know, when people say we're all in this together and a good faith, you can get a lot of really good things done. Mm -hmm. So that's probably it. Yeah, that, the, the, you touched on one thing that 
you know, when I came from the city, uh, we had a handful of unions mm -hmm. that we had to deal with on a, on a regular basis. Uh, I came to the county, <laughs> it's not a handful, it's, it's oh, no. uh, over 20 some unions it's, it's amazing. That, uh, that you have to deal with and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, all the relationships and contract negotiations, I think we're constantly in contract negotiations yeah. with uh, one union or another and stuff. And, and uh, you, you've been the face of some of those negotiations, in fact quite a few of those negotiations over the years. One of the things that, that both at the county and the city, dealing with some of the issues and stuff. Here's, here's kind of the, the key to success. You don't have to agree or whatever, but here's what you do have to agree on going in. You have to agree on the data. If you can't yeah. even acknowledge that you're using the same figures, you're gonna, you're gonna, have, a, you're gonna have problems. Mm -hmm. And part of it, it's a trust problem. Right. One of the things I'm very proud of in the culture of the county and stuff is, don't, we're, we're not afraid to say this, this is what the figures are, or this is what the data is. Now we may want to discuss where the priorities are, how to spend that, but we're not going to argue over. The, I remember in the, in, I call them the old days now, I mean, nobody even trusted the data they were dealing with. And that made it very difficult to come to some sort of a, of a resolution and stuff. So that, I think that's, that's gone by the wayside, thank goodness. So as we kind of wrap up the show here, what does the future uh, hold for Mr. Jerry Gimmel? Well, uh, immediate future, it's hard to say what it holds, but the immediate future is, you know, I'm, I'm going to enjoy my grandkids, my three grandkids, um, my wife and I, who've been married for 45 years. Mm -hmm. um, we, have a, we have a ranch, a 50-acre ranch off a of little Spokane, along with the, the house and the three acres we live on. I could live two more lifetimes and not get all the work that needs to be done on the ranch. Yeah. And, and I look forward to that type of work. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time. Might try to golf more than a couple times a year. That'd be nice <laughs> for a change. And then, you know, I've learned this would be my third time I've retired. Yeah. And I've learned that, you know, the future is, is a moving target. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Jerry, I really enjoyed our discussion and I think our Viewers have too, but I'm afraid we've run out of time. So I'd like to thank my guest and friend, Jerry Gimmel, for joining us today. And of course, for his years of service to the people of Spokane County. I wish him all the best as he enters his retirement for the third time. And as a reminder, a video of today's spotlight can be accessed on Spokane County homepage and on our Spokane County YouTube channel. You can also listen on the go and download our Spokane County Spotlights as a podcast on the SoundCloud or iTunes app. Just go to one of those apps and search for Spokane County. I'm County Commissioner Al French. Thank you for joining us today on Spokane County Spotlight. <music>